This is an XLR cable, and so is this. In short, XLR refers to a design scheme that uses multiple pins to transmit electrical current from one place to another with these locking connectors. Working on a film set, you're most commonly going to run into three, four, and five pin XLR, depending on what you do. If you work in the electrical department, you'll see five pin used for DMX lighting control. Four pin is used for power delivery for a lot of different applications like lights or other small equipment. And three pin is used to carry balanced audio signals, which is what I'll be focusing on for the rest of this video. So why use XLR instead of the much cheaper quarter inch cables or even three and a half millimeter aux cables? Well, it all comes down to that word balanced that I used before. Since audio signals are transmitted via electricity, they're very sensitive to different types of interference caused by electromagnetic induction, which is basically just a fancy way of saying you can mess up an audio signal by putting a power line or your cell phone next to a cable. A balanced cable like XLR uses two wires to transmit copies of the signal that are opposite of each other to cancel out any noise that might be introduced over the cable. Additionally, XLR is a shielded cable, which further cuts down on possible noise in the signal. That's why there are three pins. The shield of an XLR, which is connected to pin one, is a braided sheath around the inner wire, which acts as a Faraday cage. This is very effective at blocking noise caused by electromagnetic sources like phone signals or other wireless transmitters. The other two pins connect to a twisted pair of wires with pin three carrying an inverted version of the audio signal carried by pin two. That's why it's called balanced. This clever bit of design allows the two signals to be combined at the end to effectively cancel out any noise that manages to make it through the shield. Imagine a simple audio signal like this. And say a radio signal induces an electrical current in the wire and distorts the signal a little bit. In an unbalanced wire, this current will come through as some sort of unwanted noise. With an XLR though, the distortion will affect both versions of the signal the same way. When the wire gets to wherever it's going, the inverted signal is flipped and added to the original. This both amplifies the original signal and cancels out the noise since we're now adding an inversion of the noise with reversed polarity. As a result of isolating the signal from external interference, XLR cables can be a lot longer than unbalanced cables, upwards of one to 200 feet. Really, the only limitation to cable length is the internal resistance of the wires themselves which introduce self-noise by decreasing signal strength over long distances. So a theoretical XLR made out of superconducting wire could actually be run for an infinite distance, at least until the noise that leaks in through the shielding reaches an unacceptable level. Imagine that, being able to send a mic signal to another country over XLR. Might get a bit expensive though.